Mm. G'day. Wanted to bring you an update on the vlogs. Not only am I going to focus on my day-to-day -day life and what's going on with soccer and school and just my my downtime, but also I'm going to bring you an occasional advice video. So this first one I think is pretty interesting. It's my three biggest traveling tips. So I hope you enjoy. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And there might be a bonus tip in there for you. Just got to wait and see. What I mean by comfort, it's to do with everything. It's to do with clothing, headwear. It's to do with the movies you watch, you know, your toiletries. I believe if you're comfortable, travel can honestly be a fun experience. Okay, maybe that's a lie. <laughs> It's a long flight. I'm not going to lie to you about that. And it is so painful. But being comfortable will make it a little bit easier for you. Coming over here, you know, I figure if you are traveling for 26 hours, that's two days. And in two days, you all, you wear two pairs of clothes. Most of you, I hope. If you are someone that does wear a different set of clothing every day, then it only makes sense to pack an extra set of clothing when you travel. Furthermore, there's stuff like headphones. I have these, which are really good just to... I guess if you want to be by yourself, it's good just to put them on and lock yourself away. And it's also really good to listen to music. Toiletries wise too, I think it's important to try and keep yourself clean. Most airlines for that flight will probably provide you with a toothbrush. Uh, I think this is really important. It's roll on deodorant because you're not allowed aerosol, but that's good to bring, you know, just to keep yourself feeling fresh and smelling good. Cause you know, it's always important to look your best. It's always important to smell good. Now, now listen to me carefully here. Seating is so, so, so important. Let me tell you, if you get to the airport and you go and get on that plane and you see that you haven't worried about your seat and you get a middle seat for 15 hours, good luck. Because you know what? I'm not going to have any sympathy for you because I told you in this vlog that you got to pay attention to your seating. In saying that, it just depends on the person you are. If you like to get up and down a lot, maybe the aisle seat's better for you. If you like to just to knock out and fall asleep, maybe the window seat's better for you. But I promise you, a middle seat is not what you want. It is gonna be a nightmare. Now, after my experience, I have all my travel documents together in one folder and they never leave here because I tell you what, it makes a difference being organized. It just helps speed up the process and get yourself through the whole custom checks. I was coming into LA airport. To get into America, you actually need something called an F1 visa. I get to the customs check, I get up to the front, and I give him my passport. Hey, man, how are you? Whatever, yeah, happy to be here, yeah. He says to me, where's your F1? I look at him, what do you mean? I just thought I had to bring that the first time I came. No, you gotta bring it every single time because what followed that can only be described as probably the worst experience I've ever had in an airport in my life. So I was told to wait on the side for them to bring an officer to come and come and speak to me. I was on my phone, drastically texting mum and dad and my brothers to just send me a photocopy of my F1. An officer came up to me, took my phone. He then takes me to the detention center. Worst part was I just before he took it, I texted mum and dad and I said, please call me, please call me. I need you guys to help me. Mum and dad called a total of 102 times. I go to the lady at the front and I say, can I please step outside? My parents think something seriously wrong. They nonstop calling me. She looks at me and she goes, sorry, mate. Sit back down. No one can leave here until you've been cleared. I finally get to seeing that photo that I got sent ended up saving my life because I showed it to them and they let me through. I had to wait in there for an hour and a half just to get spoken to. So after that experience for me, I never forgot again. And I'm Now there's many different ways you can do this. Uh, in my own experience coming from Sydney, you usually board the flight around 3 p.m. The quicker you can adjust to the time period, the quicker you can enjoy, enjoy being here because jet lag is a pain in the ass. I think it affects sleep, which it affects your mood and it affects training. And you want to make sure all of those things are in peak condition, especially if you're coming over here and you're trying to impress a coach.